Cynthia, you've terrified us and you've given us insight into a, a very dark and disturbing world. But in your work um, at your center, I'm sure that you've thought a lot about um, measures that citizens can take, voters can take, users of social media can take to try to contain or at least diminish uh, the, the impact of these extremist far right movements. What are some of them? Yeah, it may surprise you both and your listeners to to learn that I'm actually an optimist um, by nature. And even in this moment, I mean, I think I study and spend a lot of time looking and listening to toxic things. But um, I, I spend my days working with a team of incredible people who are testing out of the box ideas um, to create empirical evidence to show kind of the public and policymakers what works to disrupt and interrupt radicalization pathways. Already, I think one of the things we're learning is that it is much easier to prevent radicalization than it is to de-radicalize someone. And I think a lot of the work that had been done in, in terrorism and extremism was focused on what's called counter-radicalization or countering violent extremism, which in my opinion really comes far too late, right? By the time someone's already down a pathway holding on to those extremist beliefs and ideologies and conspiracy theories, it's very difficult to turn them back. But what you can do is prevent people from getting there to begin with. And one of the most effective approaches, um, as we know from lab research that we're now testing in the field, is called inoculation interventions, where you really show people how online manipulation works or how the content of propaganda is trying to persuade them before they encounter it. So it speaks to a lot of kind of media literacy work that needs to be done with people in middle school, even in high school, in digital communications classes so that they understand what does it look like when you see scapegoating? What does it look like when online manipulation happens? Um, how is someone trying to persuade you? How can you tell that they're trying to persuade you? Um, and the last thing I would say is if you start looking at the places where extremism happens, not just thinking of this as something that happens cognitively alone in people's heads, but start looking at where they encounter propaganda, where do they first run into these ideas, then it opens up a whole new set of ways to think about interventions. So if they're encountering it in a mixed martial arts gym, let's try to work with mixed martial arts trainers. If they're encountering it on college campuses, let's make sure college faculty and counselors and you know, people understand how this is happening. And so I think if you take that approach, we're starting to find a lot of people with whom we can work to create interventions than we might have thought about before. So ultimately, I am optimistic, but I think we have to be putting the resources into the really prevention and even pre-prevention side rather than just the countering radicalization end.